Greetings, Cosmeteers, and welcome back to the freshly painted Scarab and Dapper 2, who still doesn't have a name, though uh, the name suggestions are starting to come in thick and fast for the Dapper 2, so I suspect possibly uh, next episode we're going to have settled on one. They are still very insect-themed, and I, I think I approve, actually. I think we're going to end up with a fleet of insect chips, uh, but hopefully you like the redesign of the Scarab, because it's a far cry from what it was uh, prior to the redesign, thanks to the... the uh, the blueprint shifting. Now, what are we going to get down to in today's episode? Well, I've got a couple of goals. I know I made a list. First and foremost, we're going to be uh, making some tweaks to our current ships and addressing some of the comments on the last video. Then we're going to do a bit of a bigger update to the DPR2. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on its industrial capacity. And then, if we've got time, we're going to be hopping into a new system to get up to some shenanigans. As for the tweaks, we're going to start with the Dapper one. Uh, hopefully, this is going to be a relatively uh, short list of tweaks, and then we can move on to the Dapper 2 proper. Now, I am all ready for redesigning. I've got my cup of tea. I am ready to go. It is, uh, it's an Assam today. Do let me know what you're drinking down in the comments, unless it's not tea. In which case, uh, first and foremost, why isn't it tea? Secondly, make up a vaguely tea-sounding name. In fact, the more outlandish, the better. That way, I'll be able to tell who's actually drinking tea and who isn't, so I can silently judge you. But also, if there's any tea manufacturers out there looking to sponsor me, they'll think I've got a community of avid tea drinkers. It's going to be great. Just like when your teacher knew there was going to be an inspector and told everyone that every question, everyone has to raise their hands, but the ones who don't know the answer raise the left hand, and the ones who actually know it raise the right. Clever. Right, okay, so, first thing we're going to be jumping to. It's another tip from Ghosty9967-5985. For aiming. Now, this is a this is going to be super useful. I imagine it's going to be useful to a couple of people uh, watching this as well. They pointed out that instead of toggling the weapons on or off, which is what I was doing, which does have the kind of side effect. I don't know if it does it for um, crystals, but if you toggle a, uh, a weapon system, the crew will leave. I think it might even power down completely as well, which wastes all the energy in it. But instead of toggling the the system, what we could do instead, so uh, let's remove, can I remove it from control to group? Oh, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. But uh, we can simply tell it over here, instead of fire at will, we can tell it fire at target. This means that this weapon system will only engage if I have designated a target on the enemy to be attacked. That is gonna be so useful. Obviously, you're going to want to pick and choose which weapon systems you do this with. Like, for example, my flak batteries, I want them to shoot at anything that they can shoot, including the ship, if it happens to get that close. But my ion beam, I specifically only want that to target um, surgical strikes on systems that I've designated. So that's super, super useful. Thank you very much for that, Ghosty. Next up, Codemasters, and quite a few others actually, pointed out that while having the capacitor does allow me to uh, move local stores of energy around the ship nice and, and easily, the problem with this is that it does have the drawback that it downgrades the batteries in effect. They'll take a nice big whomping great three charge battery over to the capacitor, but then that becomes three one charge batteries. So between the capacitor and whatever they're charging, it's just a single crew member to a single charge rather than one crew member to three charges. Um, so they've suggested that for, at the very least, the high energy consuming systems, for example, my ion beams, I should actually run direct um, energy from the, uh, the reactor rather than the capacitors. Now, a counterpoint to this, because there's a bit of contention, uh, table made a counterpoint. They noticed that even when a system only needs one charge of power, someone, if they're being fed from the reactor, will just grab a three um, charge battery and load it in there. Now, I don't have that many three charge batteries around the reactor. Now, the reactor does seem to recharge it quite quickly, but there, there is something to be said there. I guess between the two approaches, you're either maximizing for travel time or you're maximizing for energy efficiency. Oh, that's it, quite interesting. They actually slowly fill it up from the, uh, the reactor. That's actually pretty cool. Finally, because we're still on the same topic, this 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 is, it feels like it's a very broad topic. The whole idea of how moving energy around is more efficient. Uh, Atom Sorcerer, I love the name by the way, uh, made a point that kind of echoed a couple of other comments that were sprinkled across the last two episodes. That while reactors are big, expensive, and explode, capacitors are cheaper and don't explode or don't explode as badly, so they're the safer option. They further suggested that splitting crew roles, so you've got like um, two logistics crews, so those 
was responsible for moving batteries from the reactor to the to their location, so out to a capacitor. And then those who are um, tasked with moving energy from a capacitor to a energy consumer, that that might be the best way to manage the efficiency of our logistics. Again, it's kind of fine tuning the roles and using the right tool for the job, it, coming back to the whole hammer and screwdriver analogy. But on the general topic of taking power from the reactor or from capacitors, and indeed this would also apply to ammo if you had a more ammo focused uh, weapon system on your ship, I think ultimately this is going to come down to testing both methodologies out in the wild and seeing which one works the best and then tweaking it as necessary and kind of fine tuning it. But thank you so much for all of your input. We are slowly but surely improving the setup through these iterative adjustments and your feedback is absolutely invaluable for that. Now with that all said and done, we're going to stick with the capacitors for this episode and, and possibly the episodes going forward until we decide to flip over and maybe even build a second ship so I can actually have side-by-side -side comparisons of, of which one works best in which situations. Uh, but to try and address some of the problems that we were having previously, we're going to tighten up the crew roles specifically and also where they're going to be set. I actually had a couple of comments point out that while it is very roleplay uh, uh adjacent i guess to make sure that i've always got some staff on break they never actually do go on break that's just me i refuse to to force my my crew to work like slaves they can have some downtime even if they don't actually take it uh, so i would always like to have some spares in the bunks but realistically once an operator is in their position they won't really leave unless that uh, station shuts down or it runs out of power so we don't actually need to factor in the operator travel time. That's not something we need to maximize for. So we can move all of the operating jobs, so the engineers, the navigation, and in fact the gunners, down to the bottom of the ship and just trust that they will walk to their job once they get hired and then they'll probably not leave it. Though the uh, logistics need pride in place. Having them close to what they're going to be hauling is going to be extremely important because when they haven't got anything to haul, they walk back to their bunk. Which means if in the time that they were walking back, a new job opened, they'll have to finish walking down there, then take up the new job and then walk all the way back and then move things around. So having logistics dotted around the ship is going to be super, super important. So with that said, I have gone ahead and I've tidied up our crew assignments. Now, the, the general gist of it, I guess, is that all of the operators are now down at the aft, whereas logistics are kind of clustered around the places where I think that there's going to be a need for logistics in an on going and, and uh, frequent fashion. I've also gone to the extra step, uh, though I've only done this for logistics, my lord, that's hard to, to read. Let me select one. Oh, that's so much better. Uh, I have got the individual bunks kind of designated to service the devices nearby. So we're not going to see someone from down in this logistics bunk coming up here to load fuel from this capacitor into this ion gun or and especially we're not going to see someone moving around from the other side of the ship to do it they have got their designated uh, devices that they are responsible for keeping refueled or rearmed as the case may be and that's true for all of them though these little side bunks they're more generalists they're mostly focusing on the fire extinguishers helping out with moving energy around from the capacitor and uh, finally uh, with storage in fact i think i've set all of them up to the storage because we're not really going to be asking anyone to gather stuff from outside of the ship when I'm in the middle of a fight so it won't really matter if they're not keeping too close an eye on uh, how topped up the ion batteries are but that should fingers crossed take care of everything we'll see how this goes in today's episode and uh, make tweaks as necessary all right then now that was i appreciate that was like 10 minutes of me talking through what might feel a little bit like a bland topic but uh, given how many people have posted comments about the the way to route power and, and how much of an impact that's going to have i get the, the sense that that's a very very big part of the game so i did want to give it the proper time and consideration that i feel that that topic deserves and we're probably not even finished with it uh, right now but we are finished with it for this episode episode, I think. Right, down to the redesign of the Dapper 2, which I've been promising for a little while. We need to get into see some serious, serious uh, um, industry at this point. So, first and foremost, the uh, chief comment I got on the Dapper 2's industrial capacity is to remember that factories get more efficient the closer they are. 
Thank you very, very much for this. Crazy Jack Jack reminded me that they get a 25% speed bonus to production. They don't get a production bonus, just the, the speed at which they do it. And Russell Troxel, I hope I said your, your surname correctly there, uh, for emphasizing that this doesn't... Um, care about mismatch factory, so I can have my sulfur, my, my cannon ammo factory next to my steel smelter, and they will both get a 25% boost. So, let's get down to fixing that up, shall we? So, uh, the easiest thing to do is just to uh, move that across. Of course, this is going to necessitate me making a bit of an adjustment to this general section. You know what? I kind of feel that I want to expand this out anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Let's grab this whole section down here. We are going to double this up because I desperately need more, 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 more. So if we were to pop that about there and then I can uh, quickly just grab this section. In fact, I should probably move these back just so I can uh, grab this properly. Let me do that nice and fast. Oh, this is such a cool feature, truly. Right, we want to copy it this time. And can we then paste it? Would, yeah, control V, fair enough. Uh, I don't know why I expected anything else. Right, there we go. That will do very nicely. So that's instantly expanded out our storage space, which is something we needed to get on top of. Now, uh, next up, the mining laser. Yes, yes, the mining laser is basically backwards. I thought it had a 360 uh, arc. It does not. It has a 270 arc. So I do need to decide which way this is going to face. But I was kind of thinking, it's, it's a kind of an awkward shape for most of the ship, but also, we could make it a bit of a feature if we did something like this, and we had it mounted right there, we could even then have the capacitor right next to it, and we could redesign the armor out here to make this kind of a, kind of a, a standout section. It might even want to move the bridge down here at that point. Uh, so the bridge and the mining laser were right next to each other. I think I like that idea. Okay, there we go. So we've elongated this whole area out. I've actually added in quite a lot more bunk space as well because I feel that we're probably going to need it as we expand. But uh, down here we've got the bridge, we've got a capacitor, and we've got the mining laser. Now, it will probably take the lessons that we've uh, learned with the DAPA one about uh, crew assignments and apply them down here as well. But let's uh, refocus our efforts on some more industrial capacity over here. Now, we can already see, to a certain degree, how big these facilities are going to be. For example, the coils here is going to be 3x3. Three three. Is there anything else that's more of a 2x2? Two two? That one looks like it's a 3x4 for hypercoils. Wow, tri-steel is another 4x4. Four four. Diamonds? Hmm, now, diamonds could potentially fit in up here, maybe. Uh, but we're going to definitely want to expand this out. We are going to need to go and get some more factories, I feel. Now, we could even double this up and have a, a large cluster factory down here. That might actually be a little bit more efficient overall. But let's uh, let's stick with the uh, design we've got going for the time being. So I'm going to uh, bring this over. But let's let's make this. Let's make, give the Dapper 2 a little bit more character, shall we? We've already got this protrusion over here for the mining laser. What could we put over on this side? There we go. All right, so I uh, fleshed out this side a little bit to keep things symmetrical, mostly because it probably matters for our ship's maneuverability. More than anything, I kind of like the idea of having it asymmetrical for the aesthetics. But for the time being, let's just uh, stick with the small uh, thrusters and, and just make it symmetrical so that the uh, ship doesn't have to struggle too much. Once we've got enough smaller thrusters around, I'll trust the ship to be able to uh, pulse the correct thrusters to balance the thrust between each side. But the uh, Dapper One has been off and has picked up a couple of blueprints. Now we've got hypercoils as well, but I think hmm, I am tempted to expand this out even further, which it might be a bit of a mistake, really. I'm not sure if I want to lose this kind of central line here, but at the same time, we could potentially get it so that we've got like four factories around the steel plant. Now, what is required for hypercoils? Uh, let's have a look. Does it tell me command point, production rate, coil use, copper use, power use? Is it just coils and copper that they use to make hypercoils? Because that is a pretty uh, expensive construction material that I wouldn't, wouldn't mind at all having in the uh, the production 
on the ship. In fact, we could even, if I if I was willing to sacrifice some efficiency, maybe even move that up top, I could even have the uh, factory down here, move the, the copper coils up and then replace these thrusters with uh, single thrusters. That might give us a bit of extra efficiency and would also kind of uh, give us a little bit of a lopsided design. Oh, look, okay, I like the aesthetics of it. Sometimes you, you don't want symmetry. You want a little bit of organic chaos, you know? All right, there we go. Look at this monstrosity. Now, yes, I know that I could have easily made it symmetrical just by adding an extra storage space over there, and we're probably going to want more storage spaces, especially as we grow this ship, but we're going to grow in a bit more of a haphazard, uh, very... Uh, <laughs> Wherever it fits, it fits away, because I feel that's what, what you would have more on a commercial vessel. Uh, so if, I don't know if that's actually true or not. That That's uh, perhaps a little bit uh, offensive to merchant navies the world over. Nevertheless, this is uh, what we're going to be going with. Uh, hopefully, the, uh, the the thrusters will know how to balance themselves in order to uh, keep the, the ship on the even keel. But that is going to be a relatively expensive expensive build build more command rooms oh no well maybe going with the large thrusters here then was not the right move and instead we will uh, go with these uh, that will pull down the command point use enough we're right on the edge now though so uh, we're not gonna be able to do too much more of that we could actually pop in some extra small thrusters now you might be wondering is there any point in that? There actually is. Um, as it happens, uh, the thrusters, and this is not something I've really drawn attention to up to now, but the thrusters all have a different uh, spool up time. Smaller the, f the thruster, the faster it reacts, but also the less thrust it can provide. Now, on the very, very large thrusters, that means that in any particularly arbitrary trip, you might never reach top speed that that thruster is capable of outputting because it spools up very slowly. And then, you know, down to the uh, smallest thrusters with the, the uh, power capacity. Let's see, see if it has it. Ramp up time, zero seconds. These instantly react. These have a ramp up time of zero. Uh, same there. The standard thruster, though, has one second ramp up time. The large thruster has a two second ramp up time until it hits maximum thrust. And I'm, I'm not sure the three, huge thruster might be three, might be four, something around there. So this is actually something we'll try and apply to the uh, DAPA one as well. As generally speaking, in terms of the thrusters, LB Stump actually drew my attention to this um, in that. You do want like your combat maneuvering thrusters to be of the smaller kind, even though they're not going to give you the maximum top thrust, they're going to be able to immediately course correct, whereas the larger thrusters will take time, and that's probably hurting a weapon like our very precision ion beam, which does kind of have to face an opponent. If we have smaller thrusters doing the, the micro adjustments, that will probably overall improve its efficiency. Now, this is going to be an incredibly expensive build, especially those 20 processors. That's going to be thousands upon thousands of credits is for me to be able to do so we're gonna get to uh some you know good old-fashioned salvaging and uh i will bring you back when we're ready to uh, update the build All right, then we have done a bit of trading and an awful lot of salvaging and it is finally time I be I believe uh, Yeah, we've got everything we need now to make it so pop. There we go. All right now We've got a significantly larger um, Area now for our crew. Let's just make a couple of designations that will be um, navigation will pop an engineering bunk down there and honestly the rest of it's probably going to be logistics uh, I should imagine that mostly we're gonna have logistics I maybe I could have another engineering bunk specifically down here but let's go ahead and make sure well you know what these logistic bunks I'm gonna be okay with them going wherever they need to be honestly I'm not gonna um, control them too much but we definitely need to control the energy so let's make sure that this is feeding the capacitors but it since it's close we may as well and it's only going to have a single battery we may as well have it feed all of these as well since uh, they're fairly close by 
Perhaps I should make an easier route there. I think that might make a bit of sense. Let's go ahead and allow that, shall we? I should have been in planning mode, so I didn't uh, waste components there. My bad. Uh, we're also going to get rid of that. I don't like uh, having too many doors on these, if I'm perfectly honest. Let's get rid of those. There we go. I didn't notice those earlier. Right. So, with that done, let's uh, route power. So, you will take care of... Ev Ooh, no, not that one. Uh, you will take care of all of these. There we are. Perfect. Uh, I will have you take care of all of these as well. Generally speaking, we're not going to be mining if we're moving. So I'm not too worried about that one. And then we'll have all of these just set out. Now, who manages each capacitor? That's uh, a bit of a different story, honestly. We've got lots of logistics over here. I'm going to need them to be spread out a little bit. In fact, to the point that I'm thinking of maybe moving a bunk down here. That might not be a bad idea. All things said and done, but let's uh, let's move our crew around a little bit. Let's not be in in that mode. Uh, first and foremost, I want all of you down here. Let's let's go. Move, move, move. Uh, secondly, ooh, actually thinking about it, uh, one of the reasons why we uh, don't need that many is uh, that we don't have anyone set to be an engineer right now. <laughs> That's kind of bad, isn't it? Uh, all right. Well, we probably don't need that many engineers either. Let's uh, move some of you back up. There you go. And move one of you back up. There we are. And I think that should be good enough for now. Let's let's just move you guys around a little bit more. There we are. I think that will be perfect. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and make this happen. Move uh, this bunk down here. I, I could put it there. And there, there is a massive part of me that wants to because it would just be so neat. But no, we will be sensible instead. I know me, sensible ludicrous. However, there is one final thing that I would like to add, and this is uh, something that has been pointed out a couple of times now, and that is that uh, our freighter would be the best candidate for a hyperdrive. Eventually, we want all of our ships to have them. Um, Soulsphere recommended that all of our ships having a minimal hyperjump capability will be very useful for emergency jumping out of combat, if nothing else. So we should have it on all of our ships. But uh, Justin Friesian mentioned that uh, the freighter, which is making the longer trips, it's hauling things to and from stations, that would be the best candidate for a, hy uh, a hyperdrive if I'm only putting one in for now, which is what I'm going to do. Now, this only requires, well, actually requires the hypercalls, which uh, may be a little bit of a problem. Now, you'll notice that this becomes more energy efficient the closer it is to the middle. Uh, we could have one there and one over here and we'd get a decent amount. Or I could even have one at the top and one down the bottom, perhaps. That's another option. But I think popping one over here next to the bridge, maybe. Or I, alternatively, I could have it down here and we could put it on the second bridge. That's going to cost a lot. It's not going to be a cheap option, that one. Um, especially since these get don't necessarily get loaded with energy, I don't believe. Let me just have a quick look. Uh, power capacity is 16, but I think that the power it uses is the Hyperion. So, we technically wouldn't need that connection there. Uh, and over here we can pop down a second bridge. But that one definitely would benefit from having a direct connection. In fact, let's do away with this door. That'll give us two bridges. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of an interesting design, really, when you think about it. But uh, that actually should work out well enough. Now, we're going to need some of those hypercoils, though. And in fact, we're going to need two processes again, which are painfully expensive. But uh, we, we really do need a bigger reactor. I know, I know. <laughs> we need a bigger reactor. I promise we will get one. And you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll make good on that promise, and I'll throw in a bigger reactor right now. Uh, we could one ha have one at the top of the ship, but realistically, we probably want one near all of this that's going on, or even over here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's get that happening right now, and then we'll uh, wrap the power around. But we we probably could do with a with a more efficient reactor. Ultimately, we'll just have these reactors feed the uh, capacitors as necessary, and uh, that should uh, tide us over. We've already got everything but the hypercalls and the uh, processes, but we do have a functioning ship. A functioning mining ship, no less. Uh, first and foremost, let's uh, finish hoovering up this uh, old station. And then uh, we're going to move on to some asteroids to make some hypercars for ourselves. Yes. 
By the way, another thing that I've taken to doing is holding ships hostage around stations whenever I'm there, because once you've initiated a trade with them, they can't leave. Which is great, because most of them need ammo, whereas the stations don't really need much, and that's kind of what I'm packing after taking out a station. Uh, but some of them even have some uh, extra materials, like ores and such. Um, excuse me? Okay, fair enough. Uh, which is quite useful for me to uh, trade off as well. So uh, that I can uh, bring aboard and then I can uh, convert into something that I can sell. Which, as you can see, is kind of helpful. I'll take some sulfur, I'll take some more copper. Thank you very much indeed. And we will get to converting these into glorious, glorious hypercoles forthwith. Though on that note, uh, whilst you know I'm obviously not doing this uh, via mining, it does raise the question, should I designate some areas in my storage specifically for the things that I'm making? And I kind of think that I should. Uh, a couple of people suggested that we do this. So let's mark this as definitely for steel. This is definitely for coils. This is definitely for hyper coils. And then this can definitely be for ammo. Though, honestly, maybe I should dedicate a single uh, area for each one. Well, yeah, I, I think that actually might not be a bad idea. So that's purely ammo, that's purely steel, purely coils, purely hyper coils. Now we do have some other odds and sods that I would like to have some room for, so let's mark a little bit for some speciality goods that I'm going to want to have in storage. Uh, likewise, I'm going to say that the stuff that I'm using to build things should be stored around there. The rest of it I don't really care, and we're going to expand this out significantly over time. Obviously I've got to clear up some room before they can actually start shipping things around, but this should start helping us as we go forward. All right, here we are in an asteroid field. We're about ready to uh, complete the design. We need two processes, and that's going to cost a little bit more cash than we have readily available. We do have a decent amount of hypercalls, though, but more would definitely soften the blow to our wallet. Now, for the hypercalls, we need copper and we need uh, coils, which, again, come from copper. So let's go ahead and actually get this ourselves this is going to be the the first proper test of our industrial capability uh old soul rathiel very politely asked if we could sneak in a bit of actual dedicated mining time just to show how it all works so here you go ask and you shall receive especially if you ask politely i am after all welsh i grew up in the heads of the welsh valleys so please and thank you basically power words as far as i'm concerned so uh, here we are let's see what we can do so there Hauling in the copper, now copper by itself takes up a rather large amount of space, but they should be able to just load that straight into certain areas. This has already been loaded with uh, copper coils, so immediately starting to produce the copper coils there. Now this one should have a reasonably good bonus. Does it actually tell me what the bonus is? Adjacent factories is plus 25% production rate. Does it tell me what that's going to be though, given the amount of factories? No. Well, it's, it's 50. 50 and this one is 75. Uh, we probably don't need our ammo factory to have 75, but uh, nevertheless, we've got it. Now, our mining laser made extremely short work of this. Realistically, what we need is more crew on this ship. That's that's ultimately where we're sat. Now, we could always pick up the ability to make the processes. If we can have processes, I think, tri-steel and uh, fissiles, or, or rather enriched uranium, I think that's it, that you can basically make everything you need to expand and your own fleet. Whether we're going to do all of that in a single ship, I don't know, though, because uh, that, that seems like uh, a lot of effort, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, right, the coils are more or less straight away being delivered down here, which, I mean, it's great and all, but uh, to be fair, I do want to fill up the hyper coils more than I want to fill up the regular coils, considering hyper coils are so much more valuable. So uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of exploration down here. Let's have a poke around, see if we can't find some better things to grab. There should be a decent and amount of copper over there. Are there any massive copper asteroids in here? Because sometimes you'll find gigantic ones which have huge amounts of uh, of uh, raw materials just waiting for you to snag. Let's uh, do a full sweep. I've noticed some tritanium. See, that 
for example, could have been an all-bearing asteroid. And if it were, it would have been glorious. Sadly, we are not in luck, uh, it seems. Okay, well, I'll just park over here then for now. Uh, whilst you get uh, everything salvaged, so go ahead and grab all of that. Or are we... Ah, no, our, our logistics crew are, are busy moving the cars around inside rather than going and collecting more, which is... Uh, it's going to be the case until we can expand our crew. And that's going to require that we actually go to a different sector. Uh, I imagine we're going to need to get the fame from uh, smashing a couple of other uh, bases in order to have the uh, required fame to get a couple more crew members to join us. But I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit more mining, grab some more copper as uh, we can, and uh, I shall bring you back when we're ready to upgrade the ship a little bit more and test out the hyperdrive. All right, then. We've managed to uh, do a fair old bit of mining, and at this point, I think we've got enough to make the change. Actually, we're a little bit shy still. Oh, that's probably because I haven't done the trade, and it isn't smart enough to do the trade for me first. That's fine. Let's, uh, well, first and foremost, let's shed out these uh, missile parts I don't need, but then we're going to sell off a good number of these hypercars and they are fantastically valuable which is marvelous for us go ahead and make the trade please and thank you i wish i could have the crew from the dapper one help out with that it would be very very useful <laughs> damn it please stop leaving the bridge in order to transfer cargo <laughs> it is not a very efficient use of your time but, uh, here we go make it so we've got all of the components we need or we can buy all of the components we need and there we have it perfect okay so now you'll notice immediately that oh, that I shouldn't have done that. Uh, don't be in build mode. <laughs> My lord. Uh, could we get everyone in there to... Sorry. Uh, to switch roles? There we go. And they will then take priority in those, uh, those jobs. Perfect. Okay, there we are. That should tide us by for the time being. Now, we do have a hyperdrive. And it should already be loaded. We've got a, a bit of Hyperion there as well. Let's see about jumping around, shall we? Uh, right, so, hyper jump. Oh, that is amazing. I can hyper jump just to the uh, the relays, I suppose. And it shows me how much it's going to cost. That is fantastic. Let's go over... Oh, uh, let's uh, jump over here, because that's right next to this little area. Let's see if this works. Let's slow down time. Now, I believe this has to... Ah, there we go. That's why we need the capacitor. They do need to load energy in as well. So let's put a little door there. You've got to have the uh, the actual warp fuel, but then you need to charge the drive up in order to make the jump. And... Oh, come on, really? Such a tease. That is unfair. Thank you. Oh, I like that little effect there. But that does point out one thing. I need to uh, address the energy distribution again. Because that is now all over the place. So let's uh, make sure that that is taken care of. I will allow these to help out uh, topping up these capacitors. I feel it's a reasonable thing to do. Uh, but with that, you now need to be dedicated to the task of running this hyperdrive. Or hyperdrump drive, I suppose. Right, there we go. That is perfect. Marvellous, in fact. And since we're all the way up here, we can uh, probably go and grab ourselves a wee bit of jump fuel. Then we're going to jump back to the dapper one and see if we can't put a jump drive on you as well. Now, with the efficiency of the placement of the drives, uh, which i already shown the, the uh, little kind of colour... Uh, colored area as you're looking for where to place the drive. The more greener it is, the better, the more efficient that area is to jump. We are going to go through quite a lot of fuel because uh, the Dapper one is not going to be efficient with its jump drives. I can promise you that much already. Right, okay, so let's park up. And for now, we're going to do what I should have done a while ago, and that is add in a small jump drive. Now, we can just pop this right in the middle. I don't know if they blow up big. Hopefully they don't. We're just going to say hopefully they don't. Uh, let's grab the energy distribution and make sure that this is feeding directly into that uh, hyperdrive. Now, with that done, uh, we're going to need a little bit of jump fuel at all times on the ship. And up to now, I've not really worried about 
what, uh, except for ammo, what this ship is carrying. But from now on, I'm going to say we are always going to want at least some jump fuel. A decent amount, because this is a large ship, and I think it scales based on ship as well. Uh, so with that done, let's go ahead and hail the Dapper 2 and transfer over, let's say, 40. There we go. Let's get 40 Hyperium over here. That should do us nicely, I would think. There we are, loading it all up. The jump drive is fueled. All right. Well, we've done pretty much everything we want to do in this system. There are a couple more odds and sods that I could do in there. There is a little bit to explore, but really, do we need to? Ah, Look, it would be rude of me not to. Also, I kind of want to see what it looks like when we uh, jump as a fleet. So let's pop that down there and just see which one jumps first. This will be a test of the efficiency. Well, I guess they've both been loaded. So it's all down to how quickly they can load their uh, hyperdrive with energy. Yeah, okay, so uh, we're always going to see the, the Dapper one jumping first. That's just the way that that one's going to happen. Uh, simply because it's loading with uh, triple size batteries at all times. Uh, while we're doing that then, we may as well send the Dapper 2 over here to do a little bit of extra mining. Oh, it's fantastic to actually have an industrial fleet! This is truly amazing. I'm, I'm geeking out over this big time. I don't know why, I just like being able to build my own stuff when I'm playing space games. Same with X4, same with EVE. Uh, though I guess with EVE I was much more of a trader rather than a uh, an industrialist. Though I, I made my own T2 drones and my own battleships because I could get a lot of money out of them. But uh, it was a lot easier to let someone else build it and then buy it for cheap and then sell it for a lot, a lot more. Right, so what we've got is a little uh, hyper jump beacon. You know what, though? The Dapper One can do a bit of its own uh, salvaging since we can have them mine the old fashioned way and grab the Hyperion that way so rather than pull the uh, Dapper Two over here just to refuel it. But that being said, it's not actually a bad idea in general anyway. Uh, you can stop there and grab this, please and thanks. There we go. And we'll have the Dapper Two. Hopefully find a nice big uh, Hyperion asteroid that it can mine. Uh, oh, there's a couple over here. That's uh, perfect. All right. Let's grab the jump fuel. Thank you. And once that's done, we should be able to bring the dapper one to... Oh, I can't mine those. Those are too densely buried in the uh, asteroid. Either that or I don't have room on the dapper to, to store it. And that might actually be... No, that is not the case down here. Let's quickly... Dig the, all of that up, thank you. And down here as well. Just get a little bit more energy for the trip ahead. Uh, we may as well grab this one too, since it looks like a fairly large asteroid, this one. Uh, well, I mean, it's not gigantic, but still, the, each one of these nodes has more than one element to feel, so that's good enough. All right, time for us to decide where we're going. Finally, we're going to leave the, the newbie sector and uh, in Inda. Now, we could go on to a 2 to 4, or we could jump straight to a 4 to 6. Uh, look, I, I'm well acquainted with hubris. I know what happens with hubris. We're just going to jump to the 2 to 4. I know you probably want me to uh, go for the, for the, the bigger jump, but no. All right, here we go. This looks amazing. It's like uh, the mass relays from Mass Effect, only it looks like it's actually carved out of an asteroid. Perhaps uh, this is uh, just a massive lump of uh, Hyperium that they carved into some sort of uh, structure to channel its energies. That's actually kind of cool. Right, okay, well, let's uh, interact with it. Uh, it looks like we're going to start charging up our hyperdrives at this point. Hello, Tilly. Tilly wants to watch the hyperdrives charging up. I understand. This is a momentous occasion. We're leaving the the uh, newbie system. Okay. Dapper 1 is ready to go. And it to costs a little bit more, but not too much more, I would say. All right. Engage. A little autosave. Thank you very much, game. And there we go. Hitidium. Hit it, did it, uh, hit it. Why? Why, game? Do you, do you intentionally had a name like that just to confuse me, you scallywags? Right, can we jump over there? Oh, we could if I had enough Hyperium. Okay, we definitely need to increase our Hyperium storage then. Uh, on that note, uh, let's assign a little bit more. Well, I feel that you probably have enough. 
Let's uh, have a look. How much have you got? Yeah, you've got 69. It's Dapper one that doesn't. Okay, well, uh, we're going to have to make sure that that, hap that we uh, improve that in the future. We've got an unknown signal over here, though, so let's go and uh, check it out. Oh, I love that swirl on the planet there. Well, gas giant, I suppose. Uh, okay, this looks like it's going to be a bounty. This will be the first time we've uh, seen what the bounties are like down here. So let's get the Dapper 2 out of the way and send the Scarab in. Ah, this is going to be the first time that we uh, see how your energy weapons handle it since we did the crew change, because we pretty much wiped out all of the resistance in the other system. Right, let's have a look. We're getting in range, and... Oh, we're not going to actually engage until I tell you. Well, okay, this is perhaps a little lacklustre, I'm not going to lie. But it's fine. There we go. Let's watch this slowly burn through. Are you able to close the distance? You are easily able to close the distance. Uh, disappointing. Uh, I think we're definitely going to need to get some better maneuvering thrusters on this ship. Definitely going to need to do that. Right, okay. Well, we're going to just mark this as a wreck. We'll come back for it later. Waste not, want not, after all. And for now, we're going to head on to the station proper where we can top up a couple of necessary items. Also sell a couple of items here and there as needed to make room for the uh to uh make uh, more room for hyperion as well okay i'll get the dapper one to head on in and as soon as we can see it i will designate the target okay dapper two you stay out here far away from this conflict let's see what we're going to be fighting against right now and we've got a diagonal ship by the way quite a few people have uh mentioned that they would very much like to see me put together a diagonal ship. Now, I've no idea how to build a diagonal ship, so it's going to be uh, quite a trial by fire, I'm afraid, but uh, I'm up to the challenge, I hope. Uh, at the very least, I'm willing to give the challenge a go, so uh, we'll see what I can put together, probably in uh, an episode or two's time on that one, though. There we are. And what have we got down here? Okay, so not much of a... Of a danger increase, I'm going to be honest. Though there are quite a few uh, enemy pilots around in this sector that we're going to have to deal with. Are we going to be able to get a good shot there? Yes, we are. Perfect. Now we've got a couple of pirates converging. Oh, that one's heading out, but this one's uh, heading on down, possibly towards the station. And that's another one down. Perfect. I hope you appreciate my multitasking ability right now. I'm managing to juggle, playing a game, commentating over the game, and managing the affection demands of a cat. It is uh, an arduous process. Uh, my lord. Right. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> see what we can do. Uh, we'll just pop that reactor if we can. Make this fight nice and quick. Hopefully. But so far, I've not noticed the uh, top pair of uh, ion beams shutting down. So I think for now, our slight changes have done all we need to uh, deal with the energy demands of our weapon systems, at least. Now, the nice thing about the uh, Dapper 1 is it's a lot faster than the Dapper 2, so it can easily catch up. We've got another bounty mission over there, it seems. But ultimately, we need to get ourselves some missions that we will then be able to dedicate our time to in the next episode. Right, let's have a quick... Uh, let's uh, quickly say hello to the station, see what they've got for us. Also, uh, oh, actually, uh, let's go ahead and get that payment available. 2,000, it's not terrible. Uh, stations, contact another station, sure. Loads of bounties, oh my lord. We're going to have to do quite a lot of these. Uh, actually, we've already cleared two of them. Fair enough, not going to get any uh, fame for that one. Sad to say. Uh, in terms of exploration, sure, I'll pick these up. There we go. And finally, yeah, we're going to have to crack some bases, I strongly imagine, in order to be able to uh, take those missions. Let's shed some of the materials on this ship. In fact, all of the materials on this ship. We've got the Dapper 2 to uh, carry any building supplies we need. Uh, this will give us enough room then to start loading up Hyperion fuel. Okay, not 
too bad, all things said and done. I'm really happy with the progress we've made towards uh, industrializing the Dapper 2 proper. We do need to expand out its cargo capacities a lot more. This is not much of a freighter as things stand. I'm thinking in the next episode, we're going to expand out at least double its cargo capacity and probably flesh out the remainder of its industrial capacity as well. So let's just check how much would that cost us? How much is that going to set us back? The main things I'm looking for right now are tri steel and the ooh, diamond smelter. Okay. Uh, process of. Okay, there's a lot down here. There's a lot of money's worth. I think we can do that in an episode though. Uh, whilst we're doing that, of course, we're going to be taking out the scarab to clean out this system. And uh, if all goes well, we might even make a start on a subordinate ship. Uh, another combat ship to back up the Scarab, perhaps with a different weapon loadout, though, you know, having two ion, uh, ion ships would be quite nice. But I'm thinking a ship that we can use to uh, draw the attention of enemies and perhaps force them to uh, turn themselves around so the Scarab can pick off key systems much more surgical strike style. Or the other way around, the Scarab will draw the lion's share of the attention, while another ship, perhaps even a disruptor ship, shuts down the enemy systems, making them a little bit easier to pick off either way though i really do hope you've enjoyed today's episode a bit of a build heavy one a bit of a discussion heavy one especially in the beginning but uh, again i think the topics we covered were kind of important ones especially given how often i'm getting comments about uh, about energy flow within the ship so i wanted to give it a, uh, a a good bit of time to make sure that we were making the right decisions and also to talk through the decisions i was making so thank you very much for your patience with that once again though i hope you have enjoyed and as ever if you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more do leave a like down below or let me know in the comments but until next time and as always do take care everyone